Hi, I'm Shannon from HouseImprovements.com and today I just want to show you how to install decorative crown molding uh, in your home. So uh, we've got about a, I'm not even sure, it must be a five or six inch crown mold and uh, some of it's already been installed. Actually the homeowner was diligent in uh, starting the project and we're going to actually just finish the last few pieces off and, uh, and show you how to do it. So they've gone around the house, installed the crown mold, did all the the main rooms and everything and uh, we're going to finish the entry. You can see that it's been brad nailed into place with some 18 gauge brad nails, probably two inch, that's what I would recommend. And uh, it, the crown mold we're using is a MDF product that's, well it would, would have come primed, uh, the homeowner's already painted it. And uh, once it's up then it's just a matter of filling all your nail holes, touching up any uh, joints and that sort of thing and then touching up the paint as well. Okay, so one of the first things that you want to do is uh, you're going to have to obviously go around and measure all your different wall lengths or you know a couple at a time, however you want to work it out. Um, and usually what I do, just like in uh, one of my other videos on uh, cutting uh, baseboards, was I make a bit of a map of the room on a piece of paper, cut my, copy my measurements onto there and then I can kind of have that as a reference. I know if I'm doing inside, outside, whatever type of corners I'm going to do. Um, for the most part, on a painted molding like this, I would just use uh, miter cuts. So the outside corners will be mitered, the inside corners will be mitered as well. You can do a coping cut and we will uh, demonstrate one of them uh, on an inside corner, obviously. Um, once, I explain, once I show you how to do it, you'll understand that it can only be done on an inside corner. Um, I normally wouldn't do it on a paint grade type trim. Uh, because you can easily fill a paint grade trim and touch up the paint. But uh, if you're working with something that's stained, it's a little nicer joint and uh, then you don't have to try to go back and touch it up usually. So uh, like I said, one of the first things I want to do is go around get my measurements on the lengths of the wall. So this here, this piece here will end up being two outside corners and you can see over on this corner uh, the, the piece there has already been uh, installed, uh, protruding around the corner. Make all your measurements on the wall though. Don't try to measure up here where you're guessing where your trim is going to be. So uh, in this case, I'm going to butt right into the back of that trim that's already on there. Measure over to this corner. And uh, I've got uh, 32 and 3 eighths. And I'm just going to mark it on here. And after I've got a few measured, what I do is just transfer that onto my road map or my piece of paper. Okay, so that'll be outside corners. And uh, we've got 32 and 3 eighths. So I'm just going to move over around the corner here so I can reach the next one. So on this one here, we've got an inside corner over here and an outside corner here. So I just simply butt my tape measure right into the inside corner, into that other wall. I measure right over and take a reading on the on the very outside corner of the drywall corner bead here, which is 59 and an eighth right on the nose. I'll just make a note of that. Okay, I've actually already uh, pre-measured some of the other pieces and, and pre-cut them as well. So uh, I think the next thing to do, oh, I guess I should talk about this. This is something else that uh, we kind of did ahead of time. Your corners will not always be, you can't take it for granted that they're going to be 90 degrees. Um, as long as they're within a one degree plus or minus of 90, uh, generally your, uh, your angles are going to work out pretty nicely. But uh, if you have a protractor or some type of uh, tool for checking angles, just simply, this one comes with the jig that I'm going to use by the way. Just put it on there so that both arms are against the wall and then you can take a reading right off the the angle uh, guide that's on there and you can record that on your paper as well if there's any that are a little off or you know maybe you've got some 45 degree angles and that sort of thing. Uh, we're dealing completely with 90 degree angles here or they're all very close within a degree anyways. So all of our cuts are going to be 45 degrees. Um, if you're coming into a section of wall where the walls are at 45 degrees to each other, your angles are going to be 22 and a half. So you're always dividing whatever the angle is by two uh, and cutting that angle on the ends of your, of your two pieces. 
So if you have a protractor, it'll definitely help. Uh, it works the same way, obviously, in the inside corner. Just gonna butt it in there, tighten up the little wing nut, and then make the reading there. This one's about uh, 90 and a half degrees, so, so we're pretty good. One thing that kind of throws uh, your, your angles off is the fact that, especially if it's a drywalled wall, which in most cases it will be, because you'll have a bit of a build up of mud for the first four to six inches, usually in the corners, even on the outside corners. So your corners can always be a little bit wonky, it seems like, because they're not really always completely true. So uh, don't get too bent out of shape if, if uh, you know, you think you've measured it all right, cut it right, and they don't quite match up the way you thought they were going to. It's usually because of the fact of the build up of drywall mud in the corner. So, but anyways, I think we'll uh, switch to the shop now and uh, show you how to cut these with the jig that I have. And we'll maybe uh, even cut one without the jig just so you have an idea how to do it without it. Okay, so we're out in the shop here now and we're using a 12 inch miter saw. Depending on your trim, you may not need that big of a saw, but that is just what we're using today. And we've got our trim. I just, uh, our particular stuff comes in 14 foot length. So I just cut it in a piece that's uh, easier to deal with here showing you. Um, our trim, when it goes up on the wall is gonna be like this uh, with the profile in this direction. Now the one tricky thing about cutting crown mold is you are gonna be cutting it actually flipped upside down and that's where most people usually get mixed up because you're flipping it moving it and you're trying to keep your mind wrapped around what you're doing and it can get confusing but um, so that's the trim we're using uh, we're going to use I'm mostly going to show you using this jig that I've got it's made by Craig uh, you can purchase it online just search uh, Craig crown pro molding jig and uh, you'll be able to find it on there um, it works pretty good um, like I, I think I had mentioned before, these crown molds come in different angles. Actually, I might, might not have mentioned it. There's different angles that they will sit on the wall. Uh, 45, uh, 52, and 38, I think, are the main three main ones. And that just has to do with how it sits in the corner. So this jig here is uh, basically adjustable on the bottom to set to whatever uh, angle your crown is supposed to sit against the wall. And all that does is angle this, this base here. And the important part of that is most baseboards and casings and that sort of thing, you can lie either on the, the bed of the saw or the, the fence of the saw and get your cuts right. Where with this molding, it needs to sit you know, on an angle. It can't lay flat. I guess you can with a compound miter saw, but uh, it's easier to use this jig, I find. Um, now, some people will just you know, find where the happy medium is and lean it against the fence. and uh, that can work, but uh, there's more chance of it slipping or moving on you when you're doing that. So that's why I like the jig. So uh, to, to start with, we'll, we'll make our first cut. We're gonna make the uh, inside corner cut. So again, just to keep it in your mind, it's not a bad idea. A lot of times I'll stand at the saw and I'm just visualizing how that piece is gonna go. So if I'm standing, I'm cutting the longer piece over top the closet doors, if you remember back to me measuring it. So this piece installed is going to sit up there like this. So I'm just visualizing in my head, okay, I need this bottom corner to be the long point and the angle is going to come back. It's going to come back this way. Okay, and that's my first cut. Now remember, we've got to turn it upside down now. And this is where most people, the confusion comes in, even for those of us who do it now and again. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my jig. I've turned my crown upside down. Whoops, I need to get my stand a little closer. It sits nicely on the, on the jig face and the jig sits right back against the, fa uh, the fence. And for this cut, like I said, we want this, uh, this is our bottom, remember, because we've flipped it upside down. We want this to be our long point and the angle is coming back this way. Uh, we are gonna cut a 45 degree angle. So I change the saw to 45 degrees. And I just extend my uh, molding out far enough that I can cut it with the blade and I'm keeping my jig back so I don't cut it. And then I just get everything held tight against the fence, start the saw up and make the cut. Okay, so now again, just to reconfirm what you did, I usually pull it out of the saw 
Hold it up again, reconfirm, yeah, okay, I've got my angle. I made the first cut correctly, I haven't screwed up yet. So uh, there's our uh, inside corner. Now we need an outside corner on this end. I'm gonna flip this upside down. I'm gonna make the measurement from my uh, little road map that I drew on this scrap piece. And this one is 59 and 1 8. And that was measured against the wall right from the corner. So I'm hooking right on my long point down there, which was the corner. 59 and 1 8 is what I want to mark here. Right there. I don't know if the camera can even see that, but you get the idea. So I've measured this, this face right here is what's against the wall when this is turned upside down. So there's my mark where I want to cut and I'm hooked right on the sharp end down there. And that's part of the reason why I cut that inside corner first, because it's easier for me to hook my tape onto this end and measure from it than from an inside corner where I can't hook my tape. So, so whenever I can, I try to cut my inside corner first. If there's an inside and outside, what am I getting rid of the jig for? Okay, so put my jig back on here again. Let's just reconfirm what we're doing. I'm holding it up. This is the position it's going to be. Here's my mark way over here. And I want this basically to get cut on an angle like that. So my mark is a short point and up here is a long point. Turn it upside down. And uh, just make sure my jig isn't going to get in the way of the blade. I'm holding it down tight to my jig and back to my fence. And I'll just uh, just eyeball the blade up here so I get close. This saw also does have a laser guide, but uh, I, don't, I don't always 100% trust it when you're trying to make a real fine cut. So I'll just start it up to see where the laser is. So the laser says I'm a bit long, so I'd rather be long on my first cut than short. So we're gonna make an initial cut and see where we're at. Okay, bring my piece out. Just confirm that I've at least got my angles going the right direction. I've got an inside cut here, an outside corner cut here. So uh, hopefully that's correct. <laughs> so the next step would be to take it in and just dry fit it on the wall. Make sure that everything looks like it's gonna work out with uh, what we've already got there. So I've got a couple more pieces to cut and then we'll go in and uh, just test fit these. Okay, so we're back inside and we're at the piece that uh, you just watched me cut on the saw. Uh, something else that will help you out a little bit is if you make up a couple sample pieces. Uh, in our case, we just cut for 90 degree corners. But uh, So this one's got the, the right and the left inside. I've got another one for right and left outside corner. And it just helps you to uh, reconfirm that you've got things uh, going in the right direction. If you can slide it into the pieces that you've got, get the crown positioned in the corner nicely. Uh, so just kind of use it as a guide to, to help you out getting things placed. So uh, this is the piece that you were watching me cut. Turn it in for end again. So we got it going the right way. I'm going to put a bit of glue on the end. I've already uh, dry fit it. And then we reconfirmed with that little piece that you just see me use. So I will get positioned up here. So now I just want to put it against the wall, slide it into the piece we've already got on the wall until I'm happy with the, uh, I'm just going to kick this off here. Slide it in until I'm happy with the way the, the joint kind of works out there. And I'm going to nail it into place. Okay, and I'll get another couple. I'm nailing about every 16 inches. I'll just get another couple in there so it'll stay up there. Now you can see, you can probably see on the camera, we've got a little bit of a space here. Um, again, part of that is, you know, you get your build up of mud here, you're trying to twist the trim to make it fit. Uh, with the paintable, or with, yeah, with the paintable trim, we can simply go back and fill that with either a paintable caulking or uh, a patch. And, uh, uh, 
uh, smooth it out and paint it once it's dry. And it'll look fine. So I'm just gonna get rearranged here a little bit so I can come out to the outside corners and do this other piece. This is definitely a job where two people makes it a lot easier. So if you can get somebody to give you a hand, it will make your life simpler. So I've got my uh, sample piece here for an outside corner. So again, I can just uh, confirm that everything is uh, going to work out pretty good here. It looks like it's all right. This other piece was already installed. It's going to be pretty good too. So now I've got the piece for this wall, which has two outside corners on it. bring it up now and just get a, an idea whether everything's going to work out. And we're going to be pretty nice there once everything gets, gets tight. So this piece here that uh, you know we just nailed the other end, we just want to maneuver it around until we're happy with kind of the, the way the angle and everything closes up. pretty good there. So I can tack it into place. And I should have my safety glasses on. And uh, your ceilings could be up and down a little bit so you're going to get some spacing there and again you may have to cock it or whatever you want to do to match that up a little nicer. Let's see how everything is here. This should work out pretty good so I'm going to glue this end. So I got the glue on the two ends there. You're definitely better off if you can glue your joints up. It just helps them hold together a little better. I'm just going to get my bottom in where I want it. And I'll come back and work at the top edge a little bit once I get this fastened. Okay. Try to force that up there and over. It's a little more open than I would like. You can see the movement in there just with the, I don't know if you can even see that bit of space here. Just the way with the ceiling, I can't quite get the two to come right together there. This side's a little better. I'm sure we'll get lots of comments on this uh, here, but depending on your walls and your ceiling and everything, it makes a difference on uh, what you can and can't have. Now that just doesn't want to stay together. I may have to uh, squirt a little more glue in there and tape that corner together until the glue kind of dries up because I just can't get it to stay together with the uh, nails. So put a little glue. Make sure we're having some contact back in there. So we're dripping out on the floor. I'm not even so sure that the tape's going to have enough pressure to well, that's helping. Once that sets up, we can pull the tape off, do the filling that we have to do there. 
I wish it would close up a little better, but uh, this one over here actually is pretty good. We can kind of come around and have a shot of that after. Uh, just make sure I've got all the nails in there that I want. I think I need to get two more down in that piece. We're going to move around to another corner. I'm going to demonstrate how to do a cope cut on an inside. And then we're coming out with two outside corners uh, around the end of a wall. So uh, we got to get reset up to do that. Okay, so over in this corner uh, is where I'm going to demonstrate the, the coped corner. So uh, when you're doing a coped corner, one of your pieces has to go right through, uh, you know, like you won't miter it or anything. This, so I put this piece right through square, right flat into the, uh, right into the corner. The next piece that's going to come across here, uh, I had a sample and I guess I don't have it on my body. So this piece is going to come across here. Obviously the angle is going to be a little different and we're going to cope this end. What the coping does is basically uh, just makes the profile butt right into the, the one beside it. So you're kind of making a mirror image of that profile. So as far as measuring, it really is measured all the same. We're going to measure right from right tight in the corner to the outside, which actually I already did is 24 inches. So usually what I would generally like to do, especially on a short piece like this, is we'll prep this end first. We'll do the cope before we cut it to length, just in case we have to, you know, recut it or whatever. And, uh, and uh, then we've got a little bit to play with. So I'm going to make the piece, uh, you know, 30 inches long or something to start with. Uh, I'll show you how to cope this end. Uh, it's not as easy with uh, this particular profile. There's a lot of little jogs and stuff in this bottom edge here. Uh, the upper part isn't so bad, but uh, it's not real easy to do with this style, but anyways, we'll show you how it's, how it's done. We had some comments in one of our other videos, so I thought we better show you at least what you had to do. Okay, so we've uh, taken our, uh, one of our pieces, and like I said, it's, it's over, overextended as, as far as length. And we've cut a normal miter looking corner on the inside. Okay. Now what I've got to do, this is a coping saw, by the way. That's what it should look like. Now what I've got to actually do is cut, follow this line, basically if you can see the paint line where the paint meets the raw wood. Basically I'm following that profile and I'm cutting back on a 45 degree angle. So it's not a super easy cut to do. Um, the reason that you do cut, cut it on a normal miter is to get the right profile for one thing. And it also gives you a nice line to follow. You can usually see it easier. So I'm just going to put it, try to do it in this uh, in a stand here so it's not moving around quite so much. <clears throat> okay, so I want to, like I said, try to cut backwards from this point. This is our finished point that's going to butt into the existing piece that's up on the wall there. So I just want to get started. And I'm just following that, that little line there. Is the lighting okay? Okay. Just like that. And you'll have to make a, a few different cuts to, to get around your profile, just depending on what it is. So I'm just kind of making a few straight in cuts. I'm going to come around this curve now and then I can come back into these ones. This blade is made with the hoop so you can kind of change what, what direction the blade is facing. And uh, the hoop is basically giving it strength but you can switch the blade around to usually work around whatever you're, come on, okay. whatever's in the way. I'm just going to cut right out to the outside and let that piece fall out. Now I can go back to those first two cuts I made and come across this bottom edge. Okay, so we've got about half of it done. We've actually got the easy part done. I got a little bit of a nick there, but. 
So we just want to basically continue right around there and uh, finish the whole rest of the profile. Okay, so once you uh, get it to that stage, you can take a scrap piece and uh, just hold the uh, profile in here somehow, like this, to simulate the uh, angles. Oh man, I really got one of these way off here. So you can see how that uh, still isn't a perfect cut. Uh, on a wood stained molding, that just kind of disappears because uh, you know this white on this white paint shows the uh, joint pretty easily. So that that's why I really wouldn't even bother coping a uh, painted molding. But anyways, this is basically what you get. MDF isn't that forgiving for this sort of thing either. But you can see how that basically what you're trying to get that profile there and you can do a bit of sanding or whatever you got to do if you've got a lot of these rounded cuts in there you can take a dowel if you have some of the right size with some sandpaper and touch it all up I'm gonna go try this up in the room just to see how it fits there and do a few little touch-ups on it probably and then uh, then we'll cut the other end and we'll I'll show you how to put it up there okay so we've got our cope uh, touched up as good as we could get it for this MDF and I'm going to get this nailed into place. And uh, I'll just double check how this outside corner worked out with our test piece. Yeah, that outside corner is going to be good. So we're good for length. Nail it up. Okay, so now as far as uh, the filling goes, I'm just going to briefly touch on that and then uh, we'll wrap things up. Okay, so now uh, once you're, you've got your crown all up in that, obviously you've got to go back and touch up all those uh, little nail holes and uh, any uh, spaces or anything that you have in the corners. So what I like to use is just like a wall repair compound. and. Uh, it's just, it's easy to work with. It dries pretty quickly. For the nail holes, you can just rub it on, fill the nail hole and run your finger back over and it just basically smooths it right off. So go around, hit all your nail holes. Uh, we've got one nail there that isn't quite in all the way. So we're going to have to go back with a nail set and just uh, set that one and then fill it. You can see where we had the tape on the corner here. It actually well, maybe you can't tell, but it peeled the paint off there. Not really a big deal because we'll, you go to touch the paint up anyways after we've done this filling. Okay, so on the outside corners, I use the uh, wall repair compound as well. On the inside corners, I like to use a, a paintable caulking. It seems like uh, the inside ones are usually the ones that want to move a little bit as the, the house is shifting and, and that seasonally. And uh, if you use the paint while caulking, it just kind of stretches usually better with it and uh, stays put so your corners aren't cracked right away. The outside corner, you could use the caulking in here as well. I find they don't seem to move for whatever reason quite as much. This is that corner we had some trouble with. You can see we got it closed up pretty good. Now we're a little better than a sixteenth of an inch space up here. We're really good down at the bottom. Just a little bit of an alignment issue. But you can see once we uh, get that all puttied in and allow the putty to dry, the filler to dry and come back and paint it again, it'll look, uh, it'll look just fine. So it's just a matter of going around, 
getting those all filled in. I guess I don't really need to spend a lot of time. You get the idea on that. Oops. So then on an inside corner, I'll maybe move over to this inside one. Okay, so on the inside corner, I just use a latex caulking. And I'm just gonna run a little, I've got a, just a fine hole. Just gonna run a real fine bead if I can get it to start. Around there. Just like so. And just take your finger and mold it into place. Make sure it's filling up all the little gaps. <clears throat> just get it cleaned up all nice. When that gets dry, then you can uh, just come back and touch up the paint. Uh, you can see there's a bit of a gap in this uh, situation between the ceiling and the molding in some spots. Some spots, when I look around the house here, are a little bigger than others. Typically what I would do is also go around and caulk that gap. I'm not usually quite as worried about one down here if there ends up being one. This one is very visible, you know, when you look around the room. This one you pretty much got to be standing right below it to see it. So I would usually take the caulking and go around here too. So I'll just do a little bit of that. So uh, and you'll see here as it disappears, that, that makes quite a difference. So just uh, run your finger around there again. And that just makes that gap up there disappear. So we had a few little issues here today. Mm, doesn't really matter what you do, your project's never going to go 100%. Um, there's a lot of variables in working with crown mold. Like I said, the, the bigger the molding, usually the more uh, difficult it can be because you've got, uh, you know, your corners aren't 100% square, your ceiling and everything's in and out, up and down. So you're going to have, this is a real world situation. It's not just going to slam up there and uh, fit perfectly every time. So it takes a little bit of goofing around and farting around to get it all done. But usually once you get going and, you know, get, get into it a fair ways, you know, you got one room done or something, you've kind of got yourself into a, a rhythm and uh, you've got all your, your problems figured out. The thing that mixes most people up, like I said, is cutting the angles because you're you're flipping that trim upside down and you know making sure you got your angles all the right way but if you can get past that usually the rest of this is a piece of cake so okay so uh, just uh, we're gonna do the wrap up here on our video I just wanted to show you one more thing here uh, that I thought of after uh, you can see we've got a pretty long wall here obviously the trim couldn't fit corner to corner so uh, just thought I'd mention it in case uh, you know you're doing a bigger room and you need to do the same thing you can see here they just cut the two pieces and butted them together, put a little bit of glue in there and it makes a nice clean joint. Uh, some people will actually uh, cut 45 degree angles on those ends, like not, not this way, just a straight cut but 45. So the two pieces kind of overlap a little bit. Uh, to be quite honest, I don't think that it really matters myself. As long as you glue that joint, you should be all right. And then like I just showed, you can uh, use that uh, compound on that there to fill that in. So. So hopefully uh, this video helped you out, at least give you a few pointers on uh, installing crown mold and you're comfortable enough to do your own project. Um, if you're not familiar with us, uh, you can check out our website at house-improvements.com. On the website, there's a bunch of articles on a few things. Uh, we also have the forum there and uh, uh, so you can go into the forum, ask any questions you have or uh, look through the, the history there. To, maybe somebody's already asked the same question, but. Uh, Post up whatever you want there, and I'll uh, be sure to get back to you in a fairly short time. Uh, and like you found this video on YouTube, um, uh, this is just our uh, channel, so you can uh, click our channel there at the top and uh, check out all our other videos. We have quite a few other ones. And also, if you like what you've seen here today, please click the thumbs up icon uh, that's just below the, the screen. Thanks a lot.